Jonathan, just before we sort of move off the, the Olympic uh, theme, you'll see that there's two torches here, two of my colleagues, Dorothy and Debbie's got her kit on, we're torch bearers but also volunteers and they're doing some sessions this afternoon. So uh, if you want to touch the, or I'm sure some of you also did the torches as well. But uh, over to our, our final speaker this morning, um, yesterday, this afternoon. They are, we're going into lunch, but some of people had breakfast, they missed probably. Uh, welcome to, to Philip Day, who is actually based locally to, to us. He's a, a solicitor that uh, Richard Lynn was talking about last night and also Vice President of the National Outdoor Events Association. Um, and if you look at his LinkedIn profile, he certainly tries to make what Richard was saying about <coughs> your health and safety being boring or now uh, the legal side being boring, he makes it fun. So over to you, Philip. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I, I retitled this last night, Mission Impossible, uh, because I've got 22 <laughs> slides and um, four minutes before lunch. <laughs> um, this is my Bible. It's called Patterson's Licensing Acts. Um, it's only 2,635 pages long, and that's volume one. <laughs> um, that deals with drinking um, and having fun. Volume two deals with losing money or gambling. Um, the government felt that um, they written the Licensing Act in um, such a clear way that they, um, they needed to um, help us understand it, so they also published guidance. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the guidance that came out last week. Um, that's um, another couple of hundred pages long, um, and I'm going to try and explain it to you. So, um, welcome to the Licensing Act 2003, as amended several times since then. Um, it was supposed to be a bit of deregulation, um, dozen or so different licensing regimes all brought into one. Um, it was going to bring us a cafe culture, continental kind of cafe culture in England and Wales. It does not apply in Scotland, it doesn't apply in Northern Ireland, or indeed anywhere else in the world. It was supposed to get rid of lots of inconsistencies and save um, vast amounts of industry. Well, did it work? Well, it all started back with the unregulated gin palaces of the 19th century, um, which resulted in scenes like this. Of course, we don't have anything like that in York, do we? Um, we have scenes like that instead. I usually um, use a slide um, that was taken in Cardiff, but one of my uh, colleagues on the council of NOAA got so upset about that, seeing as East Cardiff's uh, council city manager, um, that I, I tried to find a foreign one instead. Um, so anyway, before we get to events, we need to know a few things. Um, we need to know what we need a license for. Um, and to do that, we need to know what's actually licensable. And you need to listen carefully because there will be a test in a few minutes. Um, we then um, need to know what we have to deal with um, when we ask for a license. Um, and in order to do that, we need to understand the licensing objectives and the procedures. And we haven't got time to deal with the procedures today. We need to know how much it's going to cost and how we can get out of paying that, if at all possible. Um, and uh, we need to know how to get one. Well, the obvious way is you hire a decent lawyer. Um, and as I'm a lawyer, please note that uh, any references to any particular gender include all other known genders um, uh, uh, possible. Um, and if you do need a decent lawyer, there's the website to go to. Um, anyway, what's licensable in England and Wales? Um, the sale of alcohol. Um, or the supply of it in members' clubs, forget that, it's far too complicated for today. Note, drinking it isn't licensable, it's the selling of it that's licensable. Then the provision of regulated entertainment, not entertainment, it has to be regulated entertainment. And then the supply of late night refreshment, and that means supplying hot food or drink between 11 o'clock at night and 5 o'clock in the morning. Note, um, if you walk into a garage at five past 11 and you want a pasty, they are perfectly entitled to sell you a cold one, provided you're the person who sticks it in the microwave and heats it up. Um, if they stick it in the microwave and heat it up and give it to you, they're committing a crime. Um, regulated entertainment. Well, 
Um, it's got to be on the list. Well, there used to be a list, but they keep on changing the list, and they've tossed some of the list out. Um, and they only did that a few weeks ago. Um, and it has to satisfy one of two preconditions. Uh, and it mustn't be exempt, because they, that's either the Home Office, for the Department uh, of Culture, Media and Sport, known as the Ministry of Fun in our part of the world, uh, keep changing rules, and they promise that they're going to keep uh, doing that again. Um, so anyway, the preconditions. A limb warning. Um, health and safety. This is the idiot's guide. This is the simplified version, because I've only got minus two minutes left. Um, the entertainment. This is entertainment, not drinking. It must be either to the public, any aspect of the public, spectators can, people walking by, with a view to entertaining them. So, for example, um, a dancing lesson is not a licensable activity. But when they dragged me many years ago, my daughter was knee high to a grasshopper and was doing ballet. We used to have to go along to the living performance once a year where they all showed off and bored us to death for a couple of hours. Um, that was a performance. It certainly wasn't entertaining, but it was, <laughs> it was licensable. Um, or if it's not, if it's not um, to any extent to the public, it's a purely private event, um, then if the object of the exercise is to make a profit, even if it's for charity, then it satisfies the precondition, but um, it's got to be on the list. Um, and here's the list. Live and recorded music, the performance of a play, an exhibition of a film, performances of dance, but not dancing itself, and entertainment of a like kind to music or dancing. Now, when they first brought in the Licensing Act, um, people like me thought, well, what on earth does that mean? Um, and then we eventually worked it out that they were actually talking about things like pole dancing and things like that, which isn't sort of really forms of a play or whatever, but it's a bit like it, um, and it's caught under that. Uh, but they didn't actually, at the time, uh, make taking your clothes off a licensable activity. Um, they have done it now, but um, as long as you only do it 12 times a year... <laughs> then you don't need one of these things, which is um, a sexual entertainment venue license, which is what all the lap dancing clubs now have to have. Um, indoor sports, that's a licensable activity, um, but um, because the Millennium Stadium had a roof, they decided that um, even when that was shut, it was still officially um, uh, outdoors and not indoors. Um, boxing and wrestling, um, a licensing, licensable, um, that's from about a week ago. They've included cage fighting and various uh, martial arts, and it doesn't matter whether you're indoors or out of doors. But at the same time, they've crossed two things off the list, which is facilities for making music and facilities for dancing. So you do not need a license now if you've got a dance floor um, and you've got a sound system. Um, but if you use it, you get caught because... <laughs> pointless being on the list in the first place anyway um, then there are the exemptions uh, and again the limbo warning uh, this is the complete list and it keeps changing it keeps changing it changed last week um, uh, anyway uh, some of these um, have been there all along performances in places of public religious worship um, not places where worship might happen they're exempt so if you want to hold a grave, don't go to the local head teacher and ask to use the school hall. Go and see the vicar. <laughs> or the rabbi. Um, or you can go along to the local mosque or whatever. Um, you can use the church, but unless they're in the habit of holding religious services in the church hall, the church hall, I'm afraid, is not exempt. Religious services are exempt, so you can sing along in church or in the mosque or whatever, um, but um, if you're carol singing um, out in the street, um, it was licensable, um, except that now, um, so long as it's not amplified, it's not licensable, um, unless it's in a pub, 
<laughs> in which case it's not licensable again. Mm. Um, music that is ancillary to some other licensable activity, um, in other words, background music, that's not licensable. Um, and it's now, as from last week, if you have um, exempt indoor sports, which is indoor sports with less than a thousand spectators, then the music that accompanies the indoor sports, that's not licensable either. And now, and this is from October of last year, you can have unamplified live music anywhere to any size of audience, provided you don't start at 4 o'clock in the morning and you finish um, at 11 o'clock at night or earlier. Um, but it's got to be amplified. So you can have the London Symphony Orchestra there, but the minute anybody sticks an amplifier, a microphone anywhere near them, you need a license to get. <coughs> um, there are some more exemptions. Um, amplified live music in premises licensed to sell alcohol for consumption on the premises is now exempt, provided that the audience is less than 200. That was the Live Music Act. A uh, guy called Fergal Sharkey campaigned for <coughs> 10 years to get that through um, and eventually succeeded. Um, performances of plays and exhibitions of dance are now exempt provided the audience is less than 500. And indoor sporting events are exempt if the audience is less than 1,000. And possibly, we'll wait for this one, we think it may come in next week, next month, we don't know, films with an audience of less than 1,000 people. Why the different numbers? Please write to him and ask, because I haven't got a clue. It just doesn't make any sense, uh, but he's the fellow who's, um, who's in charge of all this. Um, anyway, um, more exemptions. Um, this is the last one, this lot. Morris dancing. Yes, um, uh, ever since the Licensing Act came to force, um, our politicians in this country decided that it was perfectly okay for grown men to go prancing around towns and villages throughout England where it was bashing each other with offensive weapons with jingling bells, wearing flowers in their hair, and generally upsetting people like me. <laughs> why, why should that lot be exempt? I don't know. Anyway, um, anyway bitter <coughs> audience participation. There is a rule. Do not assume that there's only one right answer. Okay? So, that. Who remembers the rumble in the jungle. Yeah. Foreman and army? Yeah. Yeah. Right, licensable or not licensable? Everybody thinks it's licensable, put their hands up. Oh, it's boxing. Boxing doesn't matter whether it's indoors or outdoors. But it was in the jungle. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't in England or Wales, so they didn't need a license. <laughs> This lot, this lot are known as the dancing JCBs. They turn up at uh, country shows all over the place, there's about a dozen of them, um, and they use, um, there's lots of slides of these, they're fascinating to watch, um, it's quite a show, and they call themselves the dancing JCBs. Is that licensable? It depends on which licensing officer you ask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one guy rang me up one day and said, you've got, you've got dancing in your license. I said, yeah, and he pointed his voice. He said, well, you're advertising dancing JCBs. I said, you're not being serious. You, you're seriously suggesting you're going to prosecute us because you've got a bunch of guys doing that sort of thing in a bunch of tractors. Go away and don't be so silly. Um, and he went away and wasn't so silly. Um, what about that then? Punch and Judy. Licensable or not licensable? Yeah. Licensable. Because it's a performance of a play. Mm. Yeah? Okay, when was the last time you saw a crowd of more than 500 people <laughs> watching? <it? laughs> See, it's not licensable. Oh, yeah. <coughs> film 4. Not licensable. Yeah. Shrink yeah. films. Yeah. 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 No, it's not licensable. Um, it's not licensable because contemporaneous television programmes 
even if they're showing repeats, are exempt. I forgot to mention that one. <laughs> um, and that includes BBC One. But if you record it, and then you play it back to an audience, you need a license because you're then showing a film. Um, what about this lot? Um, this outfit are called yeah. Sealed Knot. They're uh, a medieval reenactment society. Um, and they go around um, pretending to uh, recreate the um, civil wars and things like that. Licensable or not? Yeah. yeah. It is a form of a play. If you look at the dictionary definition, although they don't have a script as such, they follow a pattern. And they're clearly performing um, for the purposes of entertaining an audience. Two more. Um, salsa class. Licensable or not? No. No. Because they're not doing it for the purpose of entertaining anyone. And then, <laughs> <laughs> finally, um, burlesque dancing. Licensable or not licensable? It's licensable. How often do they do it? <laughs> it's licensable as a performance of dance. The question is this whether they need an SEV for it, a oh, sexual yeah. entertainment venue license. These particular ladies have those bits and those bits covered. <laughs> and they therefore do not fall within the first part of the definition of what counts as sexual entertainment. <laughs> However, Parliament in its wisdom uh, wrote a bit in that if the entertainment was intended to cause any member of the audience, <laughs> any member of the audience, sexual stimulation, this is for training. We're waiting for a test case on the last time <laughs> saying, uh, to find out whether or not you need a sex license for it. There you go. Um, anyway, um, so we need a license, or do we? Welcome to um, the TEN, which is the temporary vet notice. Now, what this thing does is it allows anybody who's over 18, anybody, to give notice that they're going to, something, they're going to do something that is licensable for up to seven days without telling the neighbours. And it only costs 21 quid. Um, you have to tell the council, and you have to tell the police, and you have to tell the EHO. The catch is, you can only have a maximum of 499 people there. And these guys can object if they think that your event is going to breach one of the licensing objectives. So what are those? They are the prevention of crime and disorder. Note, not the detection of crime. The number of times we have arguments with police officers about CCTV, does CCTV prevent crime? No, it just helps them catch them afterwards. Um, so it's not the detection, it's the prevention of crime and disorder. Preventing public nuisance, um, and this is far wider than just a statutory nuisance. Public nuisance, it's noise, it's smells, it's litter, it's a nuisance, it's a nuisance, but it has to be a nuisance to the public, not just one person. Public safety, I'm going to speak to Mr. Lim, um, but the Licensing Act is only concerned with the safety of the public. They don't care a tinker's cuss about the staff, the performers, unless they're actually taking part as karaoke, which is public singing, um, and then finally, but they each have equal status, the protection of children from harm. And by children, we mean anybody who's under the age of 18. Um, that's because the Licensing Act says so. Um, public health is not a licensable objective, um, or licensing objective, yet. But that's because we're in Bournemouth, and we're not in Glasgow, because up north in Scotland, public health is on the list, and they're trying to get it on the list here, and as a first step, 
when you now make a licensing application, you also have to tell the local health authority. And some of them are beginning to object left, right and centre, particularly in this part of the world. So we need a premises licence. We're going to speed up now. How do you get one? First of all, you obtain a copy of the 27-page form. Okay, it's now 24 pages because they took out the bits about facilities for dancing and so on. Um, and you fill most of it in using common sense because you have to tick the boxes and write your name down and tell them what time you're going to do it. Um, and then you get to this thing called Section M, which is the operating schedule. And in that, you have to explain how you're going to promote the licensing objectives, which are... Go on. Crime, nuisance, public safety, and kids. Yeah. Children. Yeah. Um, we have to pay the fee. We have to supply a plan as per the regulations. Um, and we have to comply with all the formalities. So we have to put blue notices up on the site. Um, if you walk back here, there's one next door <coughs> in that building, uh, which I went, sad person that I am, I went and read it. It's been there since 2009 and no one's ever taken it down. Um, you have to put a notice in a, a local newspaper. You have to tell the right people, uh, and I'm not going to bore you with the list, and you now have to make sure that the council advertise the application on their website. And it's got to go on their website the day after they get it. So don't, for heaven's sake, give them an application on a Friday afternoon because you can bet your bottom dollar it won't go on on Saturday and there was a case last week that says that if it doesn't happen the following day not the following working day the following day the application is void oh, right. that was a nasty wake up call it's only, it's only a decision of a district judge in a magistrate's court so it's not binding um, but it does look as if it's right um, fees. Um, the basic fee, unless you can get away with the temporary event notice, depends on the non-domestic rateable value of the premises. And premises doesn't mean a building, it means the place you want to do it. Um, and it can be anything from 100 quid to uh, uh, 1,050 pounds, or um, if uh, they bring in a late night levy, and the first one came in yesterday, with effect on the 1st of November, um, it could cost you up to £5,490 to get your premises a licence. Um, most outdoor events take place in fields, and they don't have a non-domestic rateable value, so you get away with paying 100 quid. But there is, of course, a catch. There is an additional fee based on the capacity. If the number in attendance exceeds 5,000 at any one time, and that's very, very important. You can have 30,000 people through the gate, but as long as only 5,000 of them are, are, are there at any one time, then you're below the limit. Um, it starts to get expensive, because if you've got 5,000 to 9,999 people, it's gonna cost you a grand. Um, if you've got more than 90,000 people there, it's gonna cost you 64,000 pounds on top of your basic fee, um, and the annual fee is half of that amount. There are exemptions for um, sports stadia that are purpose-built, basically football stadia. You don't pay the additional fee, you just pay the fee based on uh, rateable value, which in their case would usually work out at £635. Um, there is uh, already a law in place that allows councils to set their own fees but it's not yet in force. Right, filling in the form. Fill in all the boxes. It's perfectly okay to say, we thought about this and we can't think of anything to offer anybody for anything <coughs> and, and leave it blank. But I tell you now, if you leave it blank, don't expect to get a license because councils don't like blank boxes on forms. However, anything that you do write down will be used in evidence against you because it will end up on your license, um, and if you don't do it, then you get into big schnook because the penalty for breaching a license condition is um, 20 grand every time you do it, and six months as a guest of the Majesty of Queen, but not her twins of castle, I'm afraid. 
Um, and you can expect somebody to come along, review your license, and take it off for you for the future. Um, other rules. Every event is different. The number of times I've seen event organisers download Glastonbury's licence <laughs> and copy it out. Don't do it, otherwise you'll end up with a 30 foot high electrified double fence all the way around the perimeter and all sorts of other things. Copy other people's conditions at your peril and only ever offer what you know you can deliver. Always apply for a permanent license for the site if you can, because it saves you money, because you only pay the annual fees, which are half the application fees. Um, you don't have to pay the local newspaper every time, and I only get to charge you once. Um, uh, and that's just a reminder for advertising purposes. Um, and the other point is that getting a license is um, uh, a, a lot harder than depending a review of a license once you have it. Um, and consider very carefully what you actually need the license for.